coli growing here, and it's living. You can see it start to grow. Then we're going to add penicillin. What are you going to see is these bacteria, they're going to pop. There wasn't any microphone on this, um, so we couldn't catch the pop sound. But what you'll see is they'll suddenly start to go clear. Boop, there goes another one. Boop, boop. It's poking holes in the cell wall. Boom, bacteria is dead. Okay, so that's how penicillin um, affects bacteria. That was probably E. coli there. And um, just the E. coli, you can see they were growing, they were elongating, and then boop, they, they lysed and they were dead. This is a very large chart of the names of a variety of different antimicrobial drugs. We group antimicrobial drugs into categories based upon how they act. So um, we just saw penicillin, which is listed here in this first category. We know that it affects the cell wall, specifically the peptidoglycan. And so this category is inhibition of cell wall synthesis. And not only is penicillin in this category, but we have cephalosporins, vancomycin, bacitracin, oxacillin, and nafacillin. Um, down here we have damage to the plasma membrane. Uh, if you damage the plasma membrane directly, then you're going to also lyse the cell. In this category are it's polymyxin B, nystatin, and amphotericin. Third category is inhibition of protein synthesis. So basically this means it's going to stop proteins from being made in some way. Um, and in this category are streptomycin. Canamycin, gentamicin, neomycin, chloramphenicol, erythromycin, and tetracyclines. Fourth category is inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis. And so if you if you prevent the cell from making RNA and DNA, then you're going to prevent it from replicating itself and making new cells. We have rifamycins, actinomycin D, nalodixic acid, novobiosin, and coumarmycin in this category. And then we have um, structure analogs such as just sulfonylides. Sometimes these are called sulfa drugs. And uh, they basically um, act as competitive inhibitors, essentially, in, in uh, met metabolic pathways and prevent... Um, uh, prevent essential compounds from being made for the cell. Okay, the video here. And so let's uh, let's play this video. This is how chemotherapeutic agents act. Chemotherapeutic agents are antimicrobial drugs that fight disease by targeting a particular structural difference between human cells and those of the microbe. Because bacteria have many such differences, it's much easier to develop antibacterial drugs. Viruses depend on the host cell's machinery, so there are fewer differences to target. And eukaryotic pathogens, such as fungi and protozoa, have fewer differences from eukaryotic human cells, making it difficult to find drugs that have selective toxicity against these pathogens. Antibacterial drugs have several different modes of action. One of the ways in which antibacterial drugs can kill bacterial cells is to block the formation of bacterial cell walls. Normally, the peptidoglycan layers are held together with peptide crosslinks. Penicillin and its relatives block the formation of these peptide crosslinks. This weakens the cell wall, ultimately causing the cell to lyse. Antibacterial drugs such as polymyxin attach to phospholipids in the bacterial cytoplasmic membrane and interfere with its integrity. Eventually, the cell lyses. Because this mode of action also interferes with human cell membranes, this antibiotic is used only on the skin, where the outer layers of cells are already dead. Antibacterial drugs such as tetracycline, chloramphenicol, and streptomycin kill bacteria by inhibiting protein synthesis. Tetracyclines block the docking site of the transfer RNA, preventing amino acids from being added. Chlorophenicol prevents formation of peptide bonds between amino acids. 
macrolides like erythromycin block the movement of messenger RNA through the ribosome. Aminoglycosides like streptomycin cause a change in the shape of the smaller 30S ribosome subunit, resulting in misreading of messenger RNA and insertion of incorrect amino acids. Bacteria have certain metabolic pathways that are not found in humans. One of these is the pathway for synthesis of folic acid, a coenzyme used in the synthesis of nucleic acids. Humans do not have such a pathway and require folic acid as a dietary supplement. One of the substrates in this pathway is para-aminobenzoic acid or PABA. Antibiotics such as sulfonamides or sulfa drugs block a step in the folic acid synthesis pathway by acting as a competitive inhibitor to PABA. This prevents synthesis of folic acid and therefore synthesis of nucleic acids. The bacterium is unable to reproduce. Most organisms synthesize nucleic acids in a very similar manner, so it's much more difficult to find differences to target for these pathways. However, there is a group of synthetic drugs called quinolones and fluoroquinolones that block DNA gyrase in bacterial DNA. They have little effect on eukaryotic cells. Other drugs, such as rifanthin, bind more readily to RNA polymerase in prokaryotes than eukaryotes and can be used to block transcription. Okay, so that's the group. And you'll notice that some of these, like protein synthesis and nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors, we haven't really talked about how proteins are made or how um, DNA is made yet, so the, the animation there probably has some things in it that don't make much sense at this point. Um, but when we go through section four of the class, we'll learn about that, and then we'll um, talk about these uh, antimicrobial drugs in a little bit more detail then with part two of this lecture. Okay, so... Oh, one question. One more... Um, Thing about this is this looks like a, a big group but um, uh, it's actually not even a not even a not even a fraction of the number of um, antimicrobial drugs that are out there so yes I do want you to learn all these names and I'd like you to learn what categories they are in for this this next lecture um, okay so how to how do antimicrobial drugs work um, some antimicrobial drugs are going to act on lots of different categories of bacteria. And so we divide, no, we, we call this these broad spectrum antimicrobial drugs. Um, they're going to kill gram positive and gram negative organisms, as well as probably some acid fast organisms, as well as maybe, uh, maybe protozoa or, um, or fungi. So they have a very broad uh, range of organisms that they work on. Narrow spectrum antimicrobial drugs are only work on certain families. So fam by family, I mean, I think back to taxonomy, right? Kingdom, phylum, class order, family, genus, species. So that's the families that I'm talking about. Um, or maybe they only act on certain genera of bacteria or even only on certain species. So they're much less useful um, overall in the medical field. Um, one of the problems in treating bacterial infections comes when there's a, not a single infection, but what we call a super infection, where you have a person who has multiple types of bacteria that are causing the illness. Um, in this case, you're going to require uh, broad spectrum chemotherapeutics, or maybe even a combination of antimicrobial drugs. And sometimes um, they'll have to get right down and culture the actual specific bacteria and then um, uh, do some testing to figure out what drugs they're susceptible to, and then maybe they can use a narrow-spectrum drug on them. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture.